Good morning, and what a wonderful day it already is, and it is going to be. You know why? Because you have the word of the Lord to hold on to. So welcome to Monday Morning Devotions, and what a joy it is to greet you today and come to you for this month for Monday Morning Devotions. Well, this morning we want to focus on 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 through 6, where Paul reminds us that for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God, for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ, and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. You know, Paul here is speaking of the importance of skill and partnership in combating unbelief. And it's easy to spot a person using human means to distract from their spiritual progress. And in contrast, we must remember that our weapons are not of this world, but an ability sourced in God. So our primary weapon, which is the Word of God, can eliminate an unseen enemy in hiding. Uh, as we near the end of this year, and what you may not realize is that nearing the end uh, can impact emotions. Uh, so what do you do with those emotions so that they don't distract you from your day-to-day -day tasks? What are you going to do with those emotions that you could be experiencing right now that they don't get the best of you today and distract you from what your purpose and assignment is today? You start considering everything toward the end of the year that has transpired in that year. You start to think as we approach the holiday season how things may be different for you this year or any other uncertainty that finds its way into your mind many times to haunt you. Uh, it's like you sit among two poles, one beckoning to where you've been and one pulling you forward to the great unknown and beyond. It, it's anxiety provoking to say the least and even today this month time is marching inexorably on and you can't stay stuck in the moment. Right that now, whatever it is that you might be experiencing or going over in your emotions, you can't stay stuck in that moment. Now, even if you are sleep deprived, the life goes on into the next day. Uh, certain events and situations in our life can feel so momentous at times, so large, but in the end, they're part of the normal fabric of our everyday existence. You know, our challenge though, is to put great days, not so good days, sunshiny days, rainy days, momentous milestones, put them all in their proper place. Uh, someone said, oh, sunshine makes a desert. Uh, you got to have some rain sometimes. The same logic applies to our emotions, my friend. Between stimulus and response, there is a space. And in that space is the power to choose our response. You know, John Milton, a poet, once said, the mind is its own place and in itself can make a heaven of hell or a hell of heaven. These lines emphasize the power of the mind and its ability to shape reality. You know, we all experience, every one of us, a wide range of emotions throughout our lives. We all experience the highs and the lows of life. We feel good about something one minute, we get excited about it, then the excitement wears off. What excited us becomes boring, be it a task that now becomes challenging, and boom, we start to lose confidence and the energy fades. We ask ourselves many times what we were excited about. Can I really do this? Is this really possible for me to accomplish? Well, uh, this is a perfect time this month this month of devotion. Stay with me, share it with a friend, connect with someone that you know can use this word of encouragement and build up to work on your emotional issues. Let's start this morning today, this week. Um, make it your goal today and this week to manage your emotions. The thought I want to leave with you is reel it in, and we'll talk more about that in the next few minutes. I want to help you with that uh, because who doesn't suffer from negative emotions from time to time? All of us do. Read your Bible, it's all there. Anyone that God used greatly, trust me, they had moments where they had to deal with those emotionals. And, and, and again, we all have highs, we all have lows. Uh, the key is 
what we do with those highs and what we do with those lows. It's easy to celebrate our highs, but what about managing those lows? Are we using our emotions to grow and learn, or are we beating ourselves up over them? And you know, it's easy to beat up on yourself. You know, you are the first person uh, to commit a crime when you murder yourself. And so many times that's what we do. Our first crime we commit is murdering ourselves. We beat ourselves up, we're abusive to ourselves. And maybe you've spent so much time internalizing, or you've lost touch with your feelings. The thing about our emotions is when we're angry or when we're upset, it was triggered by something. It just didn't happen. Something triggered that. And most of the time it's either fear or it's either anger that gets us to respond outside of biblical truths, outside of our norm, our faith, and even outside of common sense reasoning. Uh, let me make it clear, it doesn't matter how great your call is on your life, how righteous you might think you are, how long you've been in the faith, what church position you hold, or what rank and file you might possess. None of us are exempt of our emotions taking over in a given situation. And when your emotions take over, they open the door. They open the door for evil. They open the door for negativity. And as my mom would say, for off the wall thinking. And each or the other come walking on through. The evil, the negativity, the off the wall think thinking, think they have a free ride just to come in and have a heyday in your mind. For the believer, Satan often attacks through our emotions. You can be singing, preaching, teaching, praying, having a wonderful meditation in the course of a day, uh, weekend, go to church, really feel good about the moment, and yet still fall victim to evil and negativity through feelings. Feelings that tempt you to sin, to walk in unbelief, to get off of the path of right thinking. You can get discouraged really quick uh, when we're all in our emotions. We go AWOL on the assignment. I'm just not going to do it anymore. I don't think I'm just handled anymore. You know how we start talking. That's what my mom would call off the wall thinking. Uh, lust kicks in and jealousy rages and anger gets kindled and fear takes the lead and we start second guessing the people who we really need in our life. And Satan steps back. He laughs because he thinks he's got the victory. Well, sometimes we discount the importance of paying attention to our emotions day by day, thinking that our right conviction should be enough to strengthen us against evil because we identify as a spirit-filled believer as if we are exempt. Yet when those attacks come into our lives, again, they often enter by way of our emotions. Once you realize what's going on in your emotional life, again, remember this, all day today, all this week, Till the next time we meet, reel it in. The older people used to say if they thought you were in a situation and it was getting out of control, like a fisherman winds up that reel and reels that fish in, older people would say, calm down and reel it in. Behave yourself. Once you reel it in, once you calm down and work through the issues with you or whoever else may be involved, whether it's a spouse, your child, co-worker or friend or whoever it might be. It may be challenging for you, but God will help you grow through that time. When you do this, you will more than likely be grateful that you didn't act on the temptation that was dangling in front of you. So today, rely on the Holy Spirit to aid you in managing your emotions and activate Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6 that says, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him. And you know what? And he will make straight your paths. Allowing God to be your guide begins with a commitment to trust. Trusting for everything, doubting for nothing. All day, trusting for everything, doubting for nothing. All week, trust for everything, doubting for nothing. You know, and I want you to take that I want you to hold on to it, and I want you to have one of the greatest days that you've ever had in your life today because you now know how to reel it in, bring those motions to captive, 
and take those things to the Lord. And today, as we close, I want to pray with you and want you to know that you will make it. Dear God, we thank you for this day. Thank you for the blessings upon uh, those that are listening. And I pray today that as our emotions sometimes run wild within us, Father, that the Holy Spirit will help us arrest those emotions, cast our cares upon you, and oh, what peace we often forfeit, oh, what needless pain we bear, all because we do not carry everything to you in prayer. So today we lay our life before you and we submit all things unto you. In Jesus' name, amen. If this resonates with you this morning, my friend, pay it forward, share a devotion with a friend or family member, and until the next time, know that God has got you.